Hey guys, it's Alex. I'm here with the first of my five massive book hauls. I have, if I can lift this box up to show you, a very large box of books. And this is the smallest of the five, I believe. The others are all larger and full of even more books. One of the thrift shops I go to has a five dollar for a box of books policy. So you go in, you look for books, and it's like a dollar for a paperback, two for a hardback, but then five dollars for an entire box. So I go with my friend and we pick up one or two books each and then all of a sudden we're paying five dollars. So we might as well just get the whole box. Which is how I wind up with having such a book problem everywhere because it's just so easy to walk away with 20 or 30 books. I don't actually remember what all is in this box. So I'm actually kind of interested to know what I got because I don't remember when this box is from. The first book is Fractured by Karen Slaughter. It's a psychological thriller crime novel. I'm thinking along the same lines as Lisa Gardner, who I've really been enjoying. This book was lying around and I thought, hey, maybe give Karen Slaughter a try because I've seen her books quite a few times. I also got End the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Hosseini. This is his third book. He also has The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons, which, which I read both of. I have no idea what this is about, but I really, really enjoyed the other two, so I'm hoping I will enjoy this just as much. A Long Way Gone by Ishmael Bea, Memoirs of a Boy Soldier. This is a nonfiction memoir of his life as a child so soldier in, I believe, Sierra Leone. I'm not 100% certain. I couldn't I've vaguely heard of this book before, and it looks interesting, and I always do love some creative nonfiction. I also picked up Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister by Gregory Maguire. I have a bunch of his books from my friend. I haven't read any of them, but I figured I might as well collect all of them, and if I don't like them, then I will have every Gregory Maguire book ever written. I'm a little bit addicted to writing books, so I picked up The Weekend Novelist by Robert J. Ray. It's basically just like a little 52 week program you're supposed to follow to write a novel, which I will never do. I write at my own speed, but these books occasionally have like really good exercises and really good techniques. Maybe I'll get something out of it, maybe not, but I do enjoy reading these. To continue my massive Harry Potter obsession, I picked up the hardback copy of The Sorcerer's Stone. It doesn't have a dust jacket, and this book is beat up, but I kind of like collecting them without dust jackets as well as with because I just want every Harry Potter book in existence and the red is just pretty and I already have one that doesn't have a dust jacket but my Harry Potter shelf is taking over its second shelf down here and it's getting to be a very serious problem but I just can't say no. I don't want to ever say no to Harry Potter. I also picked up a really old copy of Letting Go by Philip Roth. I have a few of his books on my 1001 books to read before you die list. Um, I haven't read any of them and I don't know if this is one, but I do really want to read some of Philip Roth. I do like old hardback books without dust jackets. They just like feel so nice and just look so like sturdy and lovely. And this is just, I have no idea what this book is about because it has no description anywhere, so I just picked it up because it was Philip Roth. Another book I got was A Reporter's Life by Walter Cronkite. It's a memoir or an autobiography, I'm not sure which. Either way, it looks interesting. I'll learn a bit about Walter Cronkite, perhaps. And I do like books written by journalists and reporters because they often have very, very interesting stories to tell and they're very good at telling them. I picked up Far From You by Tess Sharp. I've already read this book. I really, really enjoyed it. It has a bisexual protagonist who's got an addiction to Oxy and she's disabled and her best friend is murdered and everyone blames her for meeting with a drug dealer and she knows that's not what happened. And it's a mystery thriller, young adult book. I enjoyed it the first time I read it and I'm really looking forward to reading it again. Another book I picked up was Heart of Lies by M.L. Malcolm. This is historical fiction slash crime slash romance about a man post-World War II whose life is destroyed because I believe he's from Hungary. 
basically he gets involved in a lot of illegal things and then becomes a huge well-known criminal around Europe who's wanted and he has to run away with his girlfriend, fiance, lover. It looked kind of interesting. It's not really my typical genre, but it's an interesting looking book and I always do enjoy branching out. To add to my massive Jody Pico collection over here, I got Songs of the Humpback Whale. This is the first book she ever wrote and published. I read it once, but the way it's told is very convoluted with different time periods like against each other and I didn't really get a good grasp of it and I've only read it the one time so I'm really looking forward to reading it, it again and maybe having a better idea of what's going on because when timelines are all jumbled it makes it more difficult for me to read and I need a couple of times going through to really understand the story but I'm so excited that I found this. Sula by Toni Morrison. I've the only Toni Morrison I've read is The Bluest Eye, and I know that's a horrific thing. I need to read more of her books, but I saw this, picked it up, and hopefully I will enjoy it and love her because Toni Morrison is deserving of all the love in the world. Flash Fiction, 72 very short stories, edited by a few people. I took a course in college on creative nonfiction and lyric essay and we studied a lot of flash fiction pieces in that time and they're basically like pieces that are shorter than short stories they're just like a paragraph to a couple of pages at the most I really enjoy writing flash fiction and sometimes they're really powerful pieces that are told in just like a page or two I don't know hopefully there's some really good ones in here another book I got was A Little Princess by Frances Hodgins Hodgson Burnett she also wrote The Secret Garden, which I love. It's one of my favorite childhood books, and I've actually never read A Little Princess. So I'm really excited to read this and maybe reread The Secret Garden because she's just such a lovely author and my childhood is right here. I'm just so excited to like continue it. The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I've been meaning to read this book since I was in about high school. And I never got around to it and I saw it, picked it up. It was written in the 80s and it's supposed to be really good. I'm not entirely sure on the plot but I've heard so many good things about it and I'm really excited to get reading it. I also picked up White Oleander by Janet Finch. This is an Oprah's book club book which I know some people cringe at but honestly she picks a fair number of good books for her book club. and. I think this was a movie and I think I've actually seen the movie and I have no idea what this is about but maybe it would be good hopefully it's a really pretty copy just like I don't know it's a very pretty book and very shiny I've been having a bit of a love affair with David Sedaris and they had a tiny book of his called Holidays on Ice I have a couple of his books and I've really enjoyed reading them and this should be a really quick and nice one to flip through. I, I just love him. He's so funny. Cold Cold Heart by Tammy Hogue. This is a psychological thriller crime novel again along the same lines of Karen Slaughter and Lisa Gardner. Never heard of it. I've never heard of her but it's about a serial killer and I do like this sort of like easy read thriller novels. They're just really fun. City of Ember by Jean Duprat. It's the first book of the Ember books. I read this when I was a kid. Like I'm pretty sure I was in elementary or middle school when I read it and it was a huge thing then. I never finished the series and I thought this might be a good book to start and then go back to the series and because I want to finish it. it was, I remember really enjoying it. It's more middle grade I think than young adult. It's my childhood and I can't just leave a book unfinished from my childhood. Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I also picked up The Lost World. I don't think it's in this haul, but it might be in another one. I've never read him before, but I have a friend who has, and my friend really enjoys his books. I have seen Jurassic Park and The Lost World, and I, I'm kind of interested to see how they are in book form. Because for the longest time, I didn't actually realize that they were a book first. One Day by David Nichols. I've already read this. I really enjoyed it. It was better than the movie, but I just, I remember it made me cry and it was really interestingly written and I want to give it a, another go. And it's just a book I want to own because I read it, I really enjoyed it, and 
It'd be nice to have that on my shelf. Investigations of a Dog by Franz Kafka. I've never read Kafka. I should have read Kafka. But basically, I'm pretentious and I saw this and I was like, oh, I should own a Kafka book. So now I do. And finally, the last book I picked up is A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. I've been slowly collecting his books, or the Song of Ice and Fire books. This is the third one. I have a couple of the others in other halls, I think. They're somewhere. I have like three or four of them so far, and I'm not going to read them until the publication date of the final book has been announced. So I'm guessing that gives me like 10 years to finish collecting these. For when I do decide to read them. But here it'll take me a while, so like the 10 years I have, or however long he takes to write it and publish it. That'll be plenty of time, because they're quite thick books. That is it for my massive haul. I'm just, I get so excited over buying books there, and then I come away with way too many, and too many that I really don't need to own, but want to own. And now that I have them, it's gonna, I'm never going to get rid of them, and it just adds to my massive growing collection of books on my shelves. But please let me know down below if you've read any of these or if you, you're you interested in any of these because I really don't know that much about many of them. I'm really excited to get to the ones I haven't read already and to reread the ones that I have. That is the first. I have four more giant boxes to get through that I will be updating over the next month or two or three, depending on when I film them. Buying books just honestly makes me so happy and just like having a box of them and walking out with a whole box of books that I previously didn't own. It's, there's nothing, there's nothing better in the world. And I have a problem, but I'm trying to stop. <laughs> Bye guys.